Today, I'm chatting with Her Excellency Sarai Chia, sweet-looking lady, runs Cambodia's central bank, leading Asia's first digital currency, Bakong, been to some of the most prestigious universities around the world, a single parent, an avid artist, and a passionate traveler. She's truly lived many, many lives in one. I am your host, Pauline. Welcome to TW Real Chats, where life's insights are shared. Thank you so much for joining me today, Sarai. Thank you for having me. I don't think I would have the courage to get out of this marriage if I'm if I weren't financially independent. Uh, could I just bring you back though to something I think that um if you if you'd be open to share with us, you mentioned you had an arranged marriage at 19, you were married for 20 years and then you had to walk out of that marriage. I think that story resonates with many of the women in our audience who um may or may not have been an arranged marriage but you know along the way where things have not worked out and in asia it's not always easy or accepted by our families to be there at that line where, you, where you're about to walk out and they go oh but what would you think about the kids um mm. won't you think about this and that what would you could you share a little bit um, with us um what might be the guiding principles almost if you, if you could well, I mean, as you can hear from me, that it, it took me 20 years <laughs> to, mm. because I, my, my parents, sometimes they can be very traditional, sometimes they can be very open-minded, but to them, their children' happiness come first. Mm. So when I had this arranged marriage, it wasn't actually forced on me, but mm. they said, well, we want to introduce you this person. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Mm. And you know, at 19, you know, it's you just it's really more out of curiosity than love, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it's it's not all bad. You know, it, I had a good couple of years at the beginning, and then things just go south, and we both busy, and it's it's you know we this thing just keep building, right? And I thought, you know, that's fine. I can just leave with it, and you know get on with my life and I stay on for, for 20 years um, and um, towards the end it well things didn't go that well um, and then I thought you know why I was at a time in my life where I thought why should I carry on like this if I don't feel happy if I don't if I'm not supported by my life partner, you know, why, why keep going on? And then that time there was friends who I, I, I come to know of who had cancer and who passed away at a very young age. And I thought, no, I, I, I could die next year, next month. And all this time I have to come home and feel, you know, um, depressed and not supported. And so, there are certain reasons, and then I thought, you know, what, what are people going to think of me as a divorcee? Mm. And this society, not very good, because if you're a divorcee, you fail. And for me in particular, they'll say, oh, see, she's successful uh, professionally, but she's done so poorly uh, personally at home. And at home. Um, but to me, I, I am happy. You know, there's there's a few reasons why in, in Asia, in my country, you should get divorced only if um, your your partner is uh, physically abusive to you, mm -hmm. or if he cheat, or mm -hmm. if he's a gambler and he's sort of depleting the family wealth, or he's he's an alcoholic, a drinker, or a drug abuser, etc. So I mean, there's there's a very specific reason why yes. you should, you know call it off, right? And and this is the kind of reason where society kind of accept accept. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, my ex-husband uh, was not physically abusive. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think he cheated on me. And if he does, I, I didn't know and I don't care. Mm -hmm. So that's that come to a point where you don't really care. And I, I think you know that it's mm -hmm. time to walk away. He wasn't a drinker. He wasn't a gambler. But the distance was building in such a way that we were living our own life. I I really didn't care what he was doing. He didn't care what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, 
and of course there's there's a lot more to it but but basically sure. i thought you know why why should i carry on uh mm-hmm. this kind of life because at the end of the day when the children are grown up and got married um it would be just me and him and if i can't bear staying alone mm-hmm. with him then you know what is my life going to be like Right? Mm-hmm. Because in the end, we all look forward to your retirement travel with your husband or wife. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you had to read your retire, your work been working so hard. And at the end of the retirement, you have to spend that. That's the time where you're supposed to enjoy. But then you have to spend with someone that you can't bear mm-hmm. uh, the presence. Then, you know, what what is it for? So I thought, you know, I don't want this kind of life. And, and so I call it off. And it was quite a drama. And of course, during the course of divorce, I discovered many other things. But I, I, I am glad that I just made a decision based on the fact that I love myself and I want to come home happy. Um, and I think I, I am financially independent enough uh, to um, take care of my kids. Uh, without having to worry about, you know, the husband's support or anything. Mm-hmm. So I can just say, okay, let's let's call it off. Uh, go and have a happy life. I'll, I'll go and have my own life. Mm-hmm. And since then, I'm happy because I've always been married as far as I know, right? <laughs> and yes, now 20 years is a long time. Yes. And, and, and especially since a very young age, you know, I'm, I'm finally happy being all by myself, single with the kids and, and all this. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having the time of my life right now. So here's the next question, because for many women in that position, they're looking across the, the river almost, right? And they're going, do I want to cross that river? And what would hold for me when I cross that river? And would, you know, it's about having that courage as you, as you did and having that clarity of thought about self-love and about being happy. Um, um, you know, would you be able to share where you are right now? You say you're really happy, but for many of them, they're thinking, oh, but if I'm lonely in my marriage, isn't being divorced just going to be just as lonely? What, what is it? What's a need for me? How do I, how do I, what would my experience be like when I cross that river? What would you say to these women? Um... I, I think for me, the, what helped me make this decision, because I've been having this thought for a very, very long time. It's not, you know, something that, you know, it it just come out, right? I, I've been having this thought and I, I'm, I don't feel happy. But then I thought, well, I have children, right? So I have to think about them. And then I, I do discuss with my children and like indirectly, I say, there's anyone in your class whose parents are divorced. And my mm-hmm. son, uh, very smart, he said, what are you saying? What are you trying to imply immediately? I said, no, I'm just asking. I'm doing this research. I said, how is this part, this child, like this girl in your class or this boy in your class? Said, they're, they're, that's okay. They're normal. Mm-hmm. And um, so through this sort of testing with the kids, and then when I finally uh, get divorced, um, my kids came to me and they said thank you for waiting until I am old enough to understand now I understand why you divorced so I'm not angry with you and I can see that you are happy so I'm okay with it and this was for me it's I almost cry and I say thank you because otherwise I would always feel bad but but that's the thing about being close to your children and constantly, I said, be present. You know what's going on in their mind. You know how much they can handle. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you, you, you have, you know, conversation with them. And they're, they're, they're quite okay um, with it. Um, my, all my kids, they, they can go to, I mean, of course, there was battle about uh, custody of the kids, but mm. my ex wanted full custody. 
I never really wanted full custody because I thought kids need their father, right? Sure. And, and so I would say if they want any day, any time going to their fathers, I don't mind. And that's and then that's turned very ugly because one person want everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I, I have their custody now. But, you know, I don't mind if they go to their father and I, I keep actually pushing my children to go to see their father because they need some male figure and it's not easy to have this kind of open heart. And it's it's not, it's something that I have to learn. I read a lot about, you know, what my personal anger can project onto them about their father. And I can't help to, you know, say bad thing about their father from time to time, but my my son would then remind me, you realize that you're talking about my father, my blood, you, know, you realize that I'm offended. And I say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. <laughs> Children can be so wise and the most uncanny moments. Yeah, so, but but I think I learned to have a more uh, open-minded about all this. It's learning. I know it, uh, it, it didn't just came. Um, I, I love, you know, how you shared everything that you, you, you said today from, from going into, um, work to, you know, working in, in the central bank to adopting each <laughs> child to, to your marriage and to coming out of it, every step of the way has never been really planned, but you sort of embraced each step as it came along for you to be where you're at today, to be successful in your career and to be really happy where you are. Yes, I, I think I am, I I think I'm blessed with a very um, short memory. Um, I tend to forget things that is and people, how? And I say, I don't know. It's like, I, I forget things quite easily, you know, especially if they're not good for me. Mm. And it, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's, in, it's, it's an ability to just put it in a drawer and, and move on. That's, that is, maybe it's learned uh, right. as well, right? Um, because if you keep carrying on, you know, certain feelings, certain thought, it's, you will never be able to get out of it. So sure. just move on and try to think positively. And I, I think I have a great, a great um, group of friends who are very supportive um, mm. and uh, who, so this is also important. I think having uh, a, a good friends with whom you can share uh, your story with and just be able to to speak it out because for 20 years I never spoke about my relationship to anyone because I thought you know why saying bad things about your spouse when you know you're at the end of the day you, he, he is still going to be your spouse people will have mm-hmm. negative your friend will have negative perception about him sure so I just kept quiet and this is this was very difficult right so now in hindsight I I think if I had a good group of friends supporting who who were not judgmental about my relationship, it would have been so much easier um, like to just to be able to to say it out. And I I realized later after the divorce that I can actually pull out a lot on them and they're still not judgmental about it. <laughs> and that's such a relief, you know, just to mm get it out it's a relief that's why i think in in western culture they ask you to see therapy and Mm. this is how also i i uh, i i I championed uh, mental health so through my foundations we launch a different um uh, program on mental health because Mm. it's it's a hidden it's a silent killer Mm. it can kill without you knowing it it's not like a heart problem or a kidney problem. You know, you scan and it's you invisible. see it. It's invisible. And people mm-hmm. with mental health tend to sort of hide it, right? So I remember during these 20 years, I guess, I'm constantly depressed and and sad. And But I can't say, and, and if, but, you know, I'm always on the stage, smiling, doing things, public speaking. Um, so I, I realized that when you see people happy, it doesn't mean that they are happy. Maybe they're, you, you should talk to them, ask them, right? 
And, and that's why, you know, again, I insist on, you know, finding a, a group of friends whom you can trust and speak to. It helps a lot because they will be the one who will ask you, what's wrong with you? Why are you so happy? Right. Right. Why right. are you so sad? Or why you, you are eating so much today? You know, it's, mm. it's good to have this group of friends who not stalking, but, you know, who's concerned and, mm. and who, who are readily you know, uh, available for you to, uh, to and, and who's listen, who can listen to you. Mm. You touch on a topic that's very close to our hearts as well, um, because we, at the Asian women, we want to connect women together because I think this uh, mutual <laughs> support is so important. I didn't have a lot of friends when I was younger because I'm, I'm actually a very introvert person. Um, so I didn't have a lot of friends, but I think as I age, um, you discover new friendship, and and I'm I'm sure my friends, they're happy to find me to also tell their stories, right? So sure. it's it's a mutual support in a way, and um, I I mean, true, we Asian women tend to be more reserved on telling their stories, and that's what I used to be, right? And I told you, you know, it, it was very difficult to hold in, and I wish you know I had this support during uh, my years yeah so I may maybe I wouldn't end up divorcing at all maybe it you know I can release and get on with life but I I don't know I'm just lucky that I can I find these people and Mm. well we found each other um Mm -hmm. so better um, late than never yeah so I I hope that everyone will find their sort of soulmates uh, eventually and, and, and be able to share it. But it's, again, you know, when, when you have friends, it's any relationship, there, there need to be maintenance, right? <laughs> uh, even in your... So, yeah, we, we try to keep in touch. Uh, we do compliment each other. Um, uh, we, we travel together from time to time, go out to have a drink together. Um, so that's that sometimes something that you you need to make effort make effort and make the time mm. um, and you can't take it for granted right um that's so precious everything that you said um what, what let, let's let's finish with this question what would you say to your younger self say 10 years ago sir i you know 10 years ago what would you say to, to that sir i then knowing what you are, where you are now? I, not much, I suppose. Um, I think whatever happened, whatever journey I, I been through from my 30 to my 40 too soon is what made me who I am. So I probably just tell her, keep living life. Mm-hmm. Uh, take it easy, you know, and, and just go with the flow. It's hard to resist, you know, there's things, it's really hard to resist doing certain things, hard to resist. So if you just let it go with the flow and see, you know, where life leads you. Um, mm-hmm. it's, just going with the flow and seeing where, where life takes you at the end of the it's, day, right? It's actually quite fun because I, I could have resisted doing things that I really wanted to do, but then I would be thinking too far ahead. What what is being too calculative? Right, that's the word. Like not being too calculative. Right, just just do as you see fit. Right, um, not in a careless manner, but you know, it's not to think too much to the future mm. because you may not even live long enough to that future that you know you're thinking about. Sure. Um, so if I need to travel, um, I, I used to be very sort of careful on, on my schedule, et cetera. Now I can let it off. And I say, if, if I want to travel, I feel really stressed and I want to travel. Mm-hmm. I have no issue canceling my meetings and just go for a day or a mm-hmm. weekend, right? Because if I keep thinking, oh, what if I cancel this meeting, then we'll have this and then, and I thought, you know, I may not even leave, you know, past next week. Right. So just do it and, and not regret anything. And I think in my life, I haven't regretted anything. Everything I did 
I think it really led me to where I am. If it's a failure, it strengthened me up. Mm. Wow. Um, I, 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 I want to thank you, Sarai, for making the time and sharing so openly about, you know, some of life's coast balls, really. Um, I want to mention something um, before you go. Um, Sarai is having an art exhibition in Seoul end of this month, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. So if you are in Seoul, Korea, um, you might want to pop in and check her out. Um, she's on Instagram and I'm just looking up my phone for your Instagram handle. It's Chair Sarai. That's C-H-E-A-S-E-R-E-Y on, on Instagram. Um, it's been really fun watching you on Instagram and, and you know, the, your you. various paintings. I love what you paint so beautifully. You. Um, <laughs> and I hope to see your exhibition in person one day. Thank, um, you. thank you so much, Sarai, for joining us today. If I am benefiting just because of this position, just because of my father, you wouldn't be here interviewing me because I was I was my my father's daughter. I think I wanted to show that I work harder than others and there's no substitute to blood and sweat. You have to work really hard uh, to to be where you are, particularly if you're women and you're young. Everything starts with money and that it's very important um, that you remain active professionally, um, that you have your own earnings um, because, you know, anything can happen. If, if you are entirely dependent on your husband, uh, husband or your counterpart, um, then it will be very difficult for you to walk out. And that sure. is the beauty of, you know, working women is that, of course, you, you have to do your work, but when you're home, you have to be home, right? When you're with them, you have to be with them and, and not away on your phone. Yeah, being present doesn't mean to be physically present, mm. right? Being present means that they can come to you anytime they need you and they can come to you, you know, a phone call, right? It's being right. present. This kid I just sent to me, just like, you know, my, my kids who uh, sent to me in my womb. These are my kids sent to the wrong womb, that's all. Guys, ladies, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Um, I am Pauline and I'll see you again in the next Real Chats episode. Bye for now.